We're going to talk about Israel this morning. There's a lot going on. If you have, haven't been watching the news the last couple of days, um, Hamas, a uh, terrorist organization that's, that's pretty well funded by Iran, um, they invaded. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu said, hey, we are, we are at war. Um, lots, lots of people killed. Lots of people injured. Um, and several, as of this morning, several, they're learning, I, I'm sure there's so much intel that is going on behind the scenes that we don't know about, but several taken hostage. Speculation this morning is, okay, who's, who is it that is, has been taken hostage? Who is it? Uh, nationality, we want to learn. Are they Israelis? Uh, American Israelis? Uh, what's, what's the situation there? Who's involved in this? And then who is going to be responding to this outside of Israel? So those are all speculative things. Again, folks, when we watch the news, I just want to tell you this. When we watch the news, we're getting probably a touch. I think that the most uh, journalists in America probably have some contacts, some better contacts than we do, um, but they are still limited in their information. So you got to understand military stuff. There's so much intel that we don't have. There's so much information that we don't have. There's so much going on behind the scenes. I'm sure conversations going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Um, so, so far we have seen overwhelming support of Israel, standing with Israel, uh, but a couple of reality checks with that. The reason that I wanted to talk about this is because Israel, the Bible says, Jerusalem is the, is the center point of this world. This is, this is God's place. You know, he dwelt there. This is his, these are his chosen people. And the Bible tells us that Israel will be a nation before him forever. Um, and he tells Abraham, hey, blessed are those who bless you. Um, and it's not so good. There's cursings for those who don't, don't stand with you. So we, we definitely want to be a supportive people group, a supportive church of Israel. We want to be in prayer for Israel. We want to be in prayer for Jewish people. We want to be in prayer right now that people in Israel would start to see Jesus, the Messiah, would start to call on his name, would start to see what God has accomplished for them, for us, for this world through Jesus Christ. That's our prayer. But I cannot imagine waking up on a Saturday morning to gunfire, to rockets, to bombs, to people entering people's houses, gunfire going on, people being snatched, things like that. I can't imagine that. I mean, even as I'm watching the news yesterday, I am doing things around my house in complete peace. I'm trying to figure out what, what, what I'm going to have for breakfast. You know, all of these things... I'm not worried about sheltering in place, going to a shelter over and over and over. Some reports yesterday, they were in and out of shelter seven, eight, nine times during the day because of things going on there. And the reason that we pay attention to these things, folks, is not so that we can say, okay, watch the world, watch the current events, watch the news, and then try to jam that into scripture so that we can say, hey, prophetically, these things are playing out. We do the opposite of that, right? We read our, our Bibles, we study Scripture, we look at Scripture, and then we say, okay, we're going to trust God for the future, amen? We're going to begin to look at everything that is going on in the world through the lens of Scripture. Could this be that? Sure. Could this be that? Sure. But we read Scripture, and then we begin to watch current events all around the world, and we don't take current events and try to jam them in. So I just want to encourage you with that. So when we think about Ezekiel 38, we think about Isaiah 17, um, Psalm 83, we think about Zechariah 12, we start thinking about all these prophetic future events, these, these conflicts that are going to happen, and we can easily start looking at all these conflicts and saying, okay, is this it? We've got to be very careful with that. We've got to remain in prayer, but we just need to be... As a church family, we need to be in prayer for Israel. We need to be in prayer for what is going on over there and know that God is in control. Amen? He is doing what he is going to do to accomplish his will, his plan, his purpose for this planet and for his people there in Israel. He is going to do that. What do we do? We pray. What do we do? We continue to focus on the commission that Jesus gave us, the Great Commission. We continue to gather together. I, I always find it interesting in Hebrews, you know, 
We talk about not forsaking the assembly, gathering together, and we do that more, more often as we see the day approaching. So there's going to be time, I believe, folks, there's going to be times when we do need to come together more often and get into God's Word and really begin to examine Scripture and take comfort in the fact that God is in control. God is sovereign. But Jesus says this in Matthew 24, and this is the Olivet Discourse. And it says, while he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, Matthew 24, verse 3, the disciples approached him privately and they said, tell us, Jesus, tell us, when, when will these things happen? And what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus replied to them, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I'm the Messiah, and they will deceive many. So we see deception is going to become more and more prevalent, more and more consistent when we get closer to the return of Christ. And he says, verse 6, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed. See that you are not alarmed because these things must take place, but then the end. But the end, it says, is not yet. The end has not come yet. Verse 7, for nation will rise against nation. And in Luke chapter 21, verse 10, it says, nations will be raised up against nation. That tells you who's in charge, amen? For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginning of labor pains. The beginning of birth pangs, the beginning of sorrows is what he says there. And folks, all of that, as apocalyptic as that language is, all of that should give us comfort, right? Jesus says in the most comforting, shepherding voice that he can to his disciples in that moment, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. There's going to be wars There's going to be rumors of wars. There's going to be famines. There's going to be pestilence. There's going to be earthquakes in various places. There's going to be constant turmoil in this world. And it began then, and we see it all throughout history. And I believe what he's saying here is it's going to become more and more consistent. It's going to become more and more prevalent in our day and age. The closer we get to the return of Christ, these things are going to become more and more evident in this world. But don't be alarmed, right? Don't be alarmed. God is sovereign. He is in control. He has a plan and a purpose for the future of this world. And it is to exalt and glorify our Savior, Jesus, on the throne. Amen? That's what we're going to see. So don't get so consumed with all of the world events and then try to jam them in. Be a good Berean. Be a good uh, student of God's word. Read God's word and then look out and watch and say, yeah, okay, God's, God's moving pieces around. God's doing things. God is, is beginning to set things into motion to accomplish his plan and his purpose. I'll tell you the most interesting thing for me was to hear Israel's ambassador to the UN saying, hey, this is our 9-11. And why do they compare it to that? Well, for one, we look at the intel. Where in the world was the intelligence for yesterday? How come these things weren't known to us? How come these things weren't known to Israel? So you start to look at an intel perspective. But then you start to look at deaths and you start to look at injuries and you start to say, okay, what in the world is happening? And for Israel, this was their national shakeup right? The state, the, the nation of Israel, this was their shakeup. This was their, hey, this is a reality check. I've heard about Abrahamic covenants. I've heard about a peace agreement with Saudi Arabia. I've heard about all of these things happening, and yesterday was a reality check. And the first thing that Saudi Arabia said about Israel was, hey, we need to be concerned with the Hamas extreme terrorists who are coming and invading, but we need to look out for them, So we start to see really a reality check with Saudi Arabia, with the Middle East, with the conflict, the ongoing conflict that is going on. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, hey, this is going to be a long, enduring event. So we need to be praying, folks, and we need to be watching. I think about last year, this time, and I was sitting in Israel, and I was at Miss Durain's house. And she's a Jewish woman, a lovely, lovely Jewish woman, her and her husband, Barry, I want to have a marriage like theirs. 
but she doesn't know Jesus. She said, oh, you're a pastor, and you preach the New Testament to your congregation. That's so amazing. But she still rejects Jesus as Messiah. She still celebrates Jewish festivals. She still follows as much as she can. And in the orthodoxy that she holds on to, she still follows the law, the law of Moses. She still tries to appeal and please God through the law. But she also rejects God by rejecting Jesus. That's the reality for many, many in Israel, many here. And I just hope and pray, knowing the heart of our God, he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all, all, it says, to come to repentance, to the knowledge of our Savior, our Lord Jesus. He wants all to be saved. So I got to think that er, even through these times, even during these times, God is making a way for people like Doreen to hear about Jesus to continually hear, to continually be evangelized, to continually hear the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is and what he has accomplished. And that has to be, folks, that has to be our focus and our prayer right now. If we believe, and I believe it, if we believe the return of Jesus is imminent, that means it can happen at any moment. And we should be constantly aware of things going on in this world. You have a couple of choices with that. You can put your head in the sand. Nobody knows the day or the hour, so why do we need to worry about any of that? And we can just focus on here and now, living in America, the center point of everything, and we can just be consumed by that. You can see I don't don't really like that. Or we can be of the group that reads all of the current events and everything. They try to stuff everything into scripture. The last one there, like I already mentioned, folks, we can be good, diligent students of the Bible, read the Bible, trust God for the future, and understand things are going to happen. It's not going to be more and more peace on this earth. Jesus says, no, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be famines, pestilence, earthquakes. Yesterday, same time, there's an there's a earthquake in Afghanistan. Hundreds, right? Hundreds dead. Folks, there's things going on. We have to trust God. He's got everything in his hand. He is in control and he knows what he's doing. And we can just be in prayer. While we have opportunity, we can tell people all about Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer. We can introduce people to him. Amen? So we're going to have a special time of prayer for everything going on over there right now. And then we're going to sing and we're going to worship because that's what we're here to do. We're here to worship God. We're here to, to call on his name. We're here to reflect on who he is and what he's accomplished for all of us. We're here to lift up his name. That's what we're here to do, folks. That's what we're here to do together and to encourage one another even during this time. Amen? Stand with me. Let's pray. And then we're going to sing. Father God, there is so much, you know, there's so much fear and trepidation, God. There's so much anxiety when we look around because we know, Father God, that you have declared the beginning from the ending. You've declared all things and you've told us in your word that there's going to be an escalation. There's going to be an acceleration of events that takes place, Jesus, before you come. And God, because of that, we can begin to watch the news, we can begin to look at events around the world, and we can just be filled with fear. Or we can rest in the fact that, God, you are in control. God, that you know what you're doing. That we don't need to question you. That we can call on you. That we can seek after you. That we can come to you. That you are our refuge, our shield, our fortress. And in every time of need that we face in this world, you are there. You are ever present. You will never leave us, you said. You will never forsake us. We can trust in that. But God, I ask that you would help us this morning, impact us with this, so that we don't get lost and consumed by this world, so that we don't just stop and and look around this world and just enjoy the things here and now, that we begin to understand this is not our eternal destination. 
Jesus, we're going to spend eternity with you. We're going to be spending eternity with you doing whatever you want us to do. We're going to be serving. We're going to be working in different capacities. But you are going to be the king of kings over this earth. The kingdoms of this world, this earth, will become your kingdom. And you will rule and you will reign in the future. And we don't need to worry about that. We can worry about right now. But Jesus, you told us to to look. You told us to be on guard. You told us to be alert. You told us to learn a lesson from the fig tree. All of that tells us, Jesus, that you don't want us to go to sleep, that you want us to stay awake, that you want us to look around and examine things and understand the times and the seasons. No, we don't know the day or the hour that you're going to return. But we can wait expectantly for your return as we watch everything going on. And God, we do lift up those in Israel. God, we lift up people like Doreen and and Barry and others there. God, who don't know you through your son, our Savior Jesus. They have not said yes to Jesus. They have chosen to reject. God, I just ask that you would Introduce them to somebody. Somebody else who would tell them. And then somebody else after that. Just consistently, God, bombard them with your grace. Bombard them with people who are bold and willing to just proclaim, Jesus, the good news of who you are and what you've accomplished. God, I ask that you would soften their hearts. God, I know there's a lot going on, and we trust your wisdom. We trust your perfect, holy, just, sovereign plan. And God, help us to trust you. Help us to lean on each other and to consider one another, to learn about each other, to provoke one another, to love and good works, God, to really just spend time in relationship. Not to be afraid to ask questions, God. Not to be afraid to just seek you through your word at this time. Father, help us as a church family to really just exemplify this in this community because I know, and I know I'm being harsh, God, but I know many churches are putting their heads in the sand this morning and they don't have any concern with anything that's going on in this world. Help us not to be that way. Father, help us to be awake. We love you so much. Accept these songs now that we are going to sing to you, God, because you are worthy of our worship. You are perfect and holy and just, and we just bow down before you. We love you so much, God. We praise you for who you are. And Jesus, we pray in your name because your name is the only name given under heaven by which mankind must be saved. So Jesus, we just praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.